Hey everybody, welcome to the next part of my custom RC F16 build. In this video, I'll be talking all about the 3D printed parts, including the composite layout molds, like this portion of the mold for the upper half of the fuselage, and parts of the plane itself that will be 3D printed, like the exhaust nozzle. I'll go over the typical print settings that I used, features that I designed into the molds, print bed orientation considerations, and finally, I'll start preparing and assembling the molds for the layups. Before I started printing all the parts, I did some test prints to find the typical print settings that I would use as the basis for all the prints. My main goal for these prints was to be as efficient with material usage as possible, while still having reliable and quality prints. I print with a 0.4mm nozzle, but for the first mold, I printed at a 0.5mm line width and two perimeters. The print came out nice, but was overly strong, so I reduced the line width back down to the nominal 0.4mm. Having just a single perimeter for the molds was out of the question because the infill disrupts the smoothness of the walls, and therefore would require extra sanding and filling in order to achieve a good layup surface. For the flying parts, however, they needed to be super light, so I printed them with just one wall. I'll be filling, sanding, and painting the plane anyway when it's finished, so any infill showing through isn't that much of an issue for these parts. For the infill, I used a grid pattern at 4%. The infill was only there to provide a little bit of support for the surfaces of the walls, as well as the top layers, so it didn't have to be that high of a percentage. Regarding the top bottom layers, I used only two layers for the bottom and three for the top. These layers will only be used for gluing the ends of each mold together, so they only have to be thick enough to provide a smooth, solid surface. For reference, I've left a list of my typical print settings in the video description. With all that being said, I ended up using almost exactly 4 kilograms of filament, which took a total print time of about 15 days and 11 hours. Quite a bit of printing. Regarding features built into the molds, the first was incorporating notches into the sides. These are to help with aligning the frames, ribs, and spars. Then, to compensate for corner bulging and elephant's foot, I added corner radii to vertically printed edges and a chamfer around the base touching a built plate. Corner bulging and elephant's feet would prevent the parts from sitting flat on a table or flush up against one another. This ultimately affects how accurately I can align them when gluing together. As you can see here, even after incorporating corner radii, I was still getting some corner bulging. I later learned that I could more effectively eliminate corner bulging by decreasing wall print speed from 35mm per second to 30mm per second. Another printing characteristic I had to consider was axis perpendicularity or axis skew. Since the plane is much bigger than my print volume, I had to break up the molds into smaller pieces that I would later glue together. Therefore, skewed axes could cause a fit-up problem. Let's look at a few simplified two-dimensional graphics. This first graphic represents a perfect world scenario where the Z and X axes are actually perpendicular. This leads to the parts fitting up perfectly without any gaps, and the parts are actually perfectly square in shape. This next scenario represents reality, where the axes are not actually perpendicular. I've exaggerated the skew here to make it easier to see. Let's also assume that the parts are not oriented on the print bed consistently, such that parts 2, 3, 4, and 5 are oriented on the bed such that they are actually rotated 180 degrees about the z-axis in comparison to parts 1 and 6. Since the z and x axes are not perpendicular, the parts will obtain a skew as they're printed, which we can see would cause fit-up problems like them having gaps and the parts themselves not being square. Let's look at this next real-world scenario where we have the same axis skew, but this time we've carefully and consistently oriented all the parts on the build plate. This means all the parts skew in the same direction, thus eliminating any fit-up gaps. The parts are still not perfectly square, but this isn't as much of a problem if the axis skew is minor. I used this consistent bed orientation strategy in my prints for this project, which means as much as I could I oriented all the parts on the build plate such that the nose of the airplane is pointed up and the top of the fuselage is facing the front of the printer. Also before I printed any of the parts, I physically adjusted my printer axes to eliminate as much skew as I could. <laughs> 
I also learned that Marlin firmware has SKU access compensation code built in that you can activate. It requires that you print some specific test parts, measure particular dimensions on those parts, and then enter those values into the firmware. It then takes those values and effectively unskews the axes digitally. I didn't end up using this firmware feature though, since I was pretty content with how physically square I was able to get the axes. I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding all the molds. I'm gonna sand the tops and bottoms so that the uh, glue surface has a little bit of abrasion to stick to. I'm gonna sand the actual tool surface so that the spray filler has something to stick to. And I'm also gonna sand the bottom edges that were in contact with the build plate because when I peeled the brim off, it didn't peel off very well and it left a little bit of material left over. Make sure to always wear respiratory protection when you're sanding. You wanna protect your lungs. And yeah, I think I'm gonna be here a while. Did I mention there was 74 molds? Unfortunately, I have some gaps in between the molds, even after gluing them up. That's because during the printing process, the, the corners or the edges of them, the parts were kind of warped up as they cooled, so I don't get a completely square, flat surface. So I'm just going to fill those with Bondo and then sand it smooth. Finally, the molds are ready for primer. I sanded the molds, glued them together, filled all the cracks with Bondo, sanded it smooth again, dusted it off again, and uh, what I'm gonna be using is this two-in-one -one filler and sandable primer. I like this because it's pretty thick, so it'll go on and fill all the cracks, or not cracks, but the layer lines on the three prints and minor imperfections, so then later I can sand it all smooth and get a nice surface. <laughs> 
just finished spray filling all the molds. What I'm going to do now is take some really fine sandpaper and sand the surfaces of the mold to get them really smooth and ready for the fiberglass layers. But I'm going to go ahead and call this video a wrap here. Thanks for watching and see you next time.